Hi guys. So one of the most common issues or injuries I see in my classes is people who've either hurt their wrists or their shoulders. So a lot of the time I get asked, can you give us a hands-free flow? And absolutely yes, you can flow without using your hands. I myself had a shoulder injury after having my son and had to do probably months of practice where I pretty much was always kind of not on my hands. So this is what the flow is going to be today. It's going to be quite a short one, but hopefully it will give you some inspiration on how to get off your hands if you are having any kind of pain or issues. We are going to start on the floor as always, warming up or firing up the back body and the front body because we're going to be balancing a lot today. And with balancing, we need lots of strength and stability from the core, from the glutes. So before we go, just come onto your back with your knees bent. Shut your eyes and take a huge breath in through the nose. And exhale, let it go. <sighs> breathe into the belly, breathe into the chest. And exhale, release. <sighs> Last time, biggest breath you've taken today, inhale. Hold it at the top for three, two, one and exhale, let it go. Now with the eyes still closed, bring your hands into prayer over your heart. Rub your palms together. Create some heat between the hands. And then place that heat onto your heart. Set an intention for your practice today. And then slowly blink your eyes open. Bring your hands alongside your body <clears throat> and exhale, lifting the hips. Give the glutes a poke, check their arm, draw the ribs down. And then slowly start to lower and lift, lower and lift. So as you move, keep your brain in your glutes. Make sure your glutes are working. Keep your focus on your breath. And keep the strength in your core. So notice, do your ribs start to pop? Can you keep that connection there? Glutes and core, strong. Doing three more. Two more. One more. Wiggle the right foot in towards center. Lift the left knee and do exactly the same thing again. This time on one leg. Remember, guys, you know your body's best. Modifiers, you need to. Yoga should never be painful. Breathing here. You can even bring your hands onto your hip bones and check that your pelvis isn't tipping as you lift and lower. Again, let's do three more. Two more. Last one. Left foot comes down, right knee up. Lift and lower brain in that glute. It'll make it work even more. And as you see, I keep tapping it. Just make sure it's still on. By giving the muscle a little tap, you're going, yep, you, I want you to work. Because other muscles like to take over our glutes inherently lazy. Okay, two more guys. Two <laughs> and one. Slowly lower all the way down. And let's quickly light up the core. So different options here. Bring your knees over your hips. Option one, exhale, dip the toe down, inhale, lift it up. If this is still too much, you can drop a foot down and do one at a time. I want everyone to be mindful of their core. So think of it like a unit, lift the pelvic floor, draw the hip bones in, hug the navel in, draw the ribs down. And as you're moving, notice, is your stomach doming? Do you lose control? If you do, then dial it down. So that was option one. Option two, you extend your full leg, dip the heel down from side to side, exhaling down, inhaling up. Option three, straighten the legs, dip the heel down. So there will be a gap between your back and the floor. Your spine is neutral, so that's normal. The thing that you want to watch for is that your lower dead back doesn't start to over arch. Because what that means is the core isn't quite strong enough, isn't doing the work that you want it to do. And it's coming into your lower back, which isn't good. Okay, we're going to do three more on each side. Exhaling down. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale. Inhale, lift. 
two more times. Move with your breath. Feel that strength within last time. Exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale up. Then either with bent feet, you can either do it dipping the toes, dipping the heels, or you can have your legs straight. We're gonna lower all the way to the ground to a count of five. Exhale, four, three, two, and one. Reach your arms overhead, reach your toes away from you. Now, <laughs> one of the main things I really believe in with people kind of getting out my classes is learn how to stand up without using your hands because really that's so much more functional than be able to wrap your leg around your head. It's something that you might actually need to be able to do in your life. I'm sure you will need to do it at some point in your life. So you can grab your hands behind your legs and we're gonna come all the way up to stand now, guys. Can you bring some momentum into it? Come through a chair and then bring your hands by your sides. If it doesn't work, simply smile, but don't give up. Keep trying. Keep bringing it into your practice. Keep testing yourself. Now, if you have pain in your shoulders and wrists, at any point during this class, feel free to do with your arms what you want them, what you what feels best. So maybe bring them on your hips, bring them on your shoulders, because I am going to be moving them around. But if that doesn't feel good for you, then you modify as you need to. So, starting with a bang. So we're going to do the flow twice through, and then we're going to add on each time. Okay. When you're ready, inhale, sweep up into your chair. As I said, hands, arms can be wherever you need them to be. In here, think of that idea of a neutral spine. So don't lift your tailbone or tuck it to give you that fat, flat back. Come into neutral. And again, poke your glutes, check they're working. Big breaths here, listen to your breath. Inhaling maybe in and out through the nose. If you have a new jaya practice, turning it on now. So that's like constriction in the back of the throat. Ocean breath. Start to sink a little bit more in the hips. And as you do so, if your arms are up, bring them parallel to the floor. Coming into a half chair, so your chest goes towards your thighs, sitting the hips back, squeezing those glutes, inner thighs hugging towards each other. Holding here for five. Breathing here for three, two, and one, slowly bring the hips so much down that they hover off the floor. Can you do this without using your hands? And then slowly coming onto your sit bones and lifting up half boat Navasana. Again, think about hugging everything towards your center. So imagine this imaginary line through your center and everything hugs in. Draw the chest up, length through the chest, holding and breathing here. Think of that strength in your core that we lit up right at the start. Remember, you can bring your hands onto the back of your thighs. You can even bring your toes down. This is still working my muscles, working my core. Holding for three, for two, and one. As you exhale, hug your, lay, um, your feet in towards you. It's easier the closer your feet are towards you because we're gonna come back into a chair. Now, if this is too difficult, which it can be, my thighs are really long compared to my calves, so this is easier for me without even starting. So anatomy does count here. So the other option is you bring a little bit of momentum into it, or you cross your feet and stand up that way, and then come back into your chair pose. Big breath in, then exhale, bring your hands to your center, heart center as you lift your left leg up towards you. Start to shoot that leg back, coming into warrior three. Let's hold it here. Spiral that left hip down. Squeeze that left glute, make sure it's on. Check that the ribs are drawing down. Breathe the crown of the head forward, so draw an imaginary line from your left toes up through the crown of your head. Holding for three. Opening through the heart, two, and one, slowly bring your left toes down, bring your left knee down, low lunge. Breathe the heart open here and squeeze that left glute. If you want to bring more of an opener into the chest, you can cactus the arms, squeeze the shoulder blades together and down, breathing the heart open. Holding for three, 
two and one. Bring your hands back to your heart. Start to sit the hips back and straighten that right leg. Push that right heel into the earth, pull it towards you and breathe the back of that right thigh open. It doesn't matter how low you go, just notice the sensations in your body and see if you can keep that spine nice and neutral. Keep digging down through that right foot, keep the breath going. As you inhale, slowly come up bend into that right knee and slowly start to tuck the back toes, shifting the weight forward, floating the arms back. From here, we're gonna open up into Ardha Chandrasana half moon. So start to open this left hip to the side. Your right fingertips can grab a block. So we kind of are using our hands here, but there should be no weight in, those, in that right hand. Like you could lift that off the ground. So. My right fingers are down just to give me that little bit of extra balance. Roll that right hip open. Glutes are super fired here. Core is on. Breathe the heart open. Holding for three. Stay with your breath, two. And we're going towards Skandasana on our left knee. So slowly start to bend into your right leg. Left foot comes down, whoop, falling. Bend into that left knee as you straighten your right leg and sit back, half squat Skandasana. So here, maybe you can get all the way down, but maybe you collapse when you're there. So can you stay more upright and keep the strength, keep the lift? Right now my glutes are super fired, my core is on, and I feel that lift of energy all the way up through the crown of the head. We're gonna go back to half moon, guys. So exhale. Start to bend into the right knee. Again, maybe bringing those right fingertips down, opening through the heart, spiraling the heart open to the left, flexing the left toes, breathing here. This, this right foot is key as well, your foundation. Ground down to feel that lifting up. Send the energy through your body. Then from here, start to close off your left hip. Bring your hands to your heart and return, warrior three. Your left foot slowly steps in towards your right as your arms lift, chair pose. Let's go to the other side. Hands come to heart center, right knee lifts. Ground down through that left foot. Imagine it's got four corners, lift through your arch and send that right leg back behind you. Right glute is on, right hip spirals down, chest opens, that imaginary line of energy through your right toes, through the crown of your head, holding for three. Draw the ribs in two and one. Right toes come down, right knee comes down. If you want to, open the arms, squeeze the shoulder blades together and down and open the heart. That right glute is firing, breathing through, this right hip, opening through the right hip flexor. Breathe the heart open. Slowly start to bring your hands to your heart as you straighten this left leg, pushing down through the heel, breathing the body over that left leg. So you're pushing down and you're kind of pulling it towards you. What this does is it activates the muscles in your legs. So this is more of an active stretch. You're not pulling yourself into it passively, but it also engages your quadricep and in turn that helps you open the hamstring even more. Holding here. And then as you inhale, slowly re-bend into the left knee, come all the way up to untuck or lift that right knee even and then start to hinge, lifting up. Warrior three. From your warrior three, start to open that right hip as your left fingertips come down. Breathing the heart open towards the right side of the room. And again, your glutes whew, are firing. Use them to help open through the hip. Holding here and breathing here. Feel the energy running up through that left leg, coming from the ground, the earth beneath you. As you exhale, slowly drop that right foot. Bend into that right knee as you sit the hips low. Glutes firing. 
Feel the lift of energy rising up through you. Push down really strongly through that left leg. Feel that nice stretch through your left thigh. Holding here for three, two, and one. Slowly start to make your way back to under Ardha Tandasana Half Moon. And then back to your Virabhadrasana Three, Warrior Three. Hands come to your heart as you square the hips down. Big breath in. Then as you exhale, bring your feet together. Lift your arms, chair pose. So again, let's do that flow again, but let's add on a little bit. So as you exhale, slowly start to bring the hips down, coming back to that half chair. Pulsing here now for 10. Glutes are on nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come down. Now, you can actually grab a strap for this if you want to, or a dressing gown cord. It doesn't have to be a yoga strap specifically. Um, we're going to do a little bit of kind of lacing through. <laughs> again, you can, uh, you can have that option to be right in your half boat again, or you can interlace the hands together and see if you can lace your feet in and out. So you can either do it with your hands. Again, I've got quite long hands, <laughs> so it's gonna be easier for me. Keep the heart open, the chest lifted, the breath going. Gonna do five more. Three. Two, last one. My counting is awful. <laughs> and then hugging your feet in towards you. I think I got that right. I'm really sorry if I got it wrong. Okay, so the question is, how do you get up? If it really didn't work last time, try a different way, see if it works this time. However you get there though, let's meet in chair pose. So, ground down through the right foot, inhale, lift that left foot in towards you. Keep your arms up this time, unless they're down low because of, your, because of any pain. And then as you, Take an inhale, can you lengthen that left leg straight out in front of you? Grow tall through the crown of your head, notice if you're leaning back. Squeeze this right glute, and then as you exhale, take the arms back alongside you, and fly your aeroplane. Warrior three, left glute on, draw that line from your head to your toes, just for a moment more. Then how softly, slowly, can you drop those toes, drop the knee, Take a big breath in, keep the arms beside you. Then as you exhale, sit back. Now, this is either gonna work or it's not, but have a little fun. Can you from here, lift the right leg high? Arms are out beside you to help with balance. Holding here for three, for two, and one. Heel comes down, float forward, arms can stay back. Big breath in, long breath out. Inhale, shift the weight forward, rise up, lift up, warrior three. Find that lifting of the arch on the right foot and then slowly start to open the body over to the left, flexing through the left toes. This time, maybe bringing your hands, whoop, lost my balance, bringing your hands to your ears. <laughs> she says, not being able to do it. Okay, there you go. Oh, <laughs> look, sometimes, guys, this is a prime example. Sometimes things do not work. <laughs> sometimes you have the wobbles. So find that focus point, connect to your core. And then as you exhale, bend into your right knee, sit down, Skandasana. This time, maybe bring your left fingertips, right fingertips down, and inhale your left arm open. Stretching, stretching to the chest, but remembering you can take any variation you need to. Three, two, and one, slowly start to bring your body over that right leg, lifting up through half moon, and then straight away, flying through your aeroplane, all the way up to stand, left leg comes in front of you, big breath in, then exhale, sit it down, Whew, chair pose. See, flows can be fiery even if we don't use our hands. Big breath in, guys. Big breath out. 
As you inhale, straighten the leg, keep your arms lifted, right knee comes into chest. Big breath in, and then exhale, left glute is on, straighten that right leg. Even if it's down here, that's fine. Keep lifting through the crown of the head, and as you exhale, take that leg back. Ooh, fiery. Line of energy, right toes through the crown of the head, breathe the fingertips back. Big breath in, then exhale, drop the right toes, come back into your low lunge. Again, big breath in, then as you exhale, sit back, and then can you lift that left leg up? Oh, I'm leaning against the door. Okay, breathing here, lifting here for three, whoop, two, and one. Left leg comes down, arms shoot back. Take a moment, take a breath in this half split, and inhale, come all the way forward back through your warrior three and then open it up Adha Chandrasana half moon find the pose and then see can you bring some extra balance into it can you lift your fingers and bring them to your ears I can't do this today <laughs> holding here and then exhale right little foot comes down sit down Skandasana maybe bringing those left fingertips down maybe stretching the right arm up Push down through the left heel, breathe the heart open. Okay, one more breath and then start to shimmy your body back over that left leg. Momentary through that half moon and then shoot the arms back. Warrior three. Totally using the wall here, I've lost my balance today. Ooh, I am definitely not perfect guys. I have all the wobbles too. As you inhale, shoot that leg forward, bring the arms up just for a moment, then exhale, feet come down, and let's take a fold. Ragdoll over the legs, so bend the knees as much as you need to. Let the hands be loose, maybe taking hold of it opposite elbows, and then maybe even taking a sway from side to side. Inhale, take a little halfway lift and then bring your, bring your butt down to the floor and come to sit on the floor, this time bringing your feet, the soles of your feet together, Baddha Konasana. Bring them really tight in towards you. Inhale, breathe the chest open and as you exhale, keep a nice straight spine as you fold forwards. Try not to round through the back, we're going to round in a moment. So keep that straight spine hinging from the hips. Breathing the thighs towards the floor and breathing the chest open. Maybe close your eyes. And if you've lost your breath, come back to it now. Try and slow it. Try and slow the heart rate. Inhale brings you up. Bring the feet together. Wider apart now, so you've got this wide diamond. And now we can fold. Inhale, opening through the heart. Then exhale, taking it down. Bringing the head towards the feet and folding forwards. How slow can you get your breath? Can you deepen it even more? Inhale, coming all the way down, plant the feet and start to roll onto your back. Vertebrae by vertebrae, head comes down last. One more stretch, guys. Recline pigeon because we've Use the glutes a lot today. So bring that right foot, flex it just underneath that left knee and then take hold of the thigh or shin and breathe the leg in towards you. If they aren't already, close your eyes and start to absorb a short but sweet practice. Yoga doesn't need to look a certain way. As we've seen today, we don't even need to use the hands. Can you become aware of your practice? And can you make it look different? Because if we're doing the same thing every day, that's actually when injuries can occur. It doesn't mean it's going to occur, but our body does like to be challenged, to be switched up. So if one day you're in a vinyasa flow class that does 100 chaturangas, the next day, can you do a flow more like this? Switch it up, take the left leg over. 
And can you also be aware if you're used to certain variations, if you're drawn to them? We all are, we like to do what we're good at. And this includes me, I'm definitely not perfect. But can you change it up, push yourself, challenge yourself to move in a different way? And maybe you can't move as well in that way, but everything takes practice, practice and all is coming. One more big breath here. I'm going to exhale and come straight into Shavasana. And your hands alongside your body, fingers curling naturally. Let's take a breath together. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. Keeping the eyes closed. Keeping your focus on your breath. Can you spend maybe one, two, five, ten minutes here? as long as you have, just tuning in and taking a moment to be and be still and connect. Thank you so much for practicing with me today, guys. Stay here as long as you need.